Good morning, everybody. There are a lot of different ways to play Melee, and I've also talked about the many different ways you can play Druid. Specifically, Caster Druid is so good. We're talking Cold Druid. Coming out, it's one of the best endgame characters you can play right now. It's amazing. Blightcaster Druid just dominates the entire early game and was pretty much the only thing people played this hardcore season. Which is exactly why I'm bringing you a build today that will blow your mind. It's called neither of those, Bear Druid. That's right, Bear Druid. Now, Bear Druid is something that has always been like pretty good, you know? It's always been in the forefront of people's minds because Bear Druid is a crowd control machine, getting gigantic AOE stuns in the form of Roar. You've got the Tremors, so you can knock monsters over. You got Bear Charge, it's super tanky. It gets strike through even if you're using a sword and shield. You don't have to use a two-hander, but if you use a two-hander, you start trucking people for like a million damage. Bear Druid, kind of just has it all. The only thing it doesn't have is the insane DPS of a spellcaster in terms of burst damage, but its damage is pretty respectable. However, for a very long time, people have not been playing Bear Druid that much, and there's actually a huge reason for this. You see, Bear Druid has had a major flaw for the past little while, and that is a bug that has been hanging over its head. You see, I mentioned that there was like a room-wide stun. Yeah, that comes from your roar spell and an ability called Killer Instinct. Whenever you use some of your bear attacks, maul and shred, you can get something called Killer Instinct out of the bear tree, and it gives you these stacks, these little visual claw marks that appear on the side of your character. The stacks give you increased damage with your attacks while you have them, and you can cash them out, you can spend them by using roar, and it causes your roar to be like a special savage roar, and it stuns everything, doing huge damage and a full room-wide area of effect stun. This effect is amazing, and it's one of the reasons why pretty much everybody was playing Bear Druid even in previous hardcore seasons. However, Bear Druid fell out of favor because of a bug. Unfortunately, there was some type of bug that was causing it so that when you started to build up these stacks over time, your game would freeze up every single time you got a stack. Now, after over a year of this bug being in the game, the developers were actually able to track it down and find out it had to do with the actual animation that loaded, those claw marks that appear on your screen. Now, while the claw marks are still a little buggy and don't perfectly represent the number of stacks that you have, whenever you get a new stack, it doesn't freeze up your game anymore, which means Druid's back on the menu and Bear Druid is coming right at you. So the real question is, should you play it? In my opinion, I think Bear Druid is a fantastic character as a starter. It's really strong right out of the gate and it's really straightforward. Bear Druids get strike through while they're in bear form, as long as you take the natural fighting feat line, which means it doesn't matter whether you use a sword and shield or a two-handed weapon, your character will be able to hit all targets in front of it just by being in your bear form. Some people do get confused by this. Um, you can't take shield mastery in bear form. You can't take two-handed fighting in bear form, the feats, because those are combat styles and your combat style is bear form. Bear form is the combat style, which is why it works with natural fighting. So if you do wanna play a two-handed fighter bear or you wanna play a shield using bear, make sure you take natural fighting and not shield mastery or two-handed fighting. People make this mistake all the time. It's the thing I most commonly see when I do build reviews for people in their animal form is they think, oh, I'm using a two-hander, I need two-handed fighting. You don't. When you're in a bear form, you just need natural fighting and to be in bear form and it works. Now the character I'm showcasing for you here today was an attempt of mine to make a high damage bear build. Now bears are inherently tanky, but because they get extra damage while using two handers in bear form, I wanted to see how it would feel if I went all in on damage. And the leveling process was amazing. You just slam everything down. The one downside to bear form is that unfortunately you don't really get a lot of access to weapons. Druid's only two-handed weapon that they can use is the quarterstaff, so you have to make a decision whether you want to go pure bear or you want to multi-class to get access to other weapon types. If you decide to go pure bear, you have to use a feat to gain access to another weapon, whether that is falchion or greatsword are kind of your two options there, the best ones, with falchion being the best one for the end game or you just multi-class and take a level of something else, which is actually fairly common. One of the more popular spirits with Bear Druid is going 18 Druid, one favorite soul, and then either one fighter or one barbarian. The benefit of one fighter is it gives you access to another feat and the Kensai Tree, so you can get action boost haste really easily out of the Kensai Tree. The benefit of favorite soul is it gives you access to a trance, so you can use your wisdom as a secondary source of damage from the divine will effect out of the war soul tree. And then 18 bear druid is pretty good. 
Plus, by taking the level of fighter, it gives you access to pretty much every single weapon in the game, which means you can easily run around with a Falchion without having to spend an extra feat, you actually get one back. Or you can play as a pure druid, gaining more attack speed from the capstone of the bear tree, but then it means you have to like make sure you're spending a feat on actually taking a weapon proficiency so you can use a different type of two-hander in the game. It's probably better to do the 18-1-1, 18, 18 druid, one fighter, one favored soul, but you know, it's neither here nor there. I think you're going to have a good time regardless because the best time that Bear Druid feels is during the leveling process. Now, Bear Druid doesn't feel bad at the end game. It does fairly well. It's a crowd control machine, as I talked about. However, for me, I just find that the single target damage of Bear Druid doesn't compare to either Wolf Druid, which does more single target damage, which makes sense. Bear's thing is AoE, and they have lots of area of effect attacks, whereas the Wolf Druid doesn't have any of that, and it just hits one person really, really fast. And I was kind of going for like a high single target damage character. So honestly, I really don't know why I decided to play Bear Druid because in hindsight, that was like the worst option because it's really not the focus of the character. It's about it being an AOE cleave machine. And so what I was going for was a character that just decimates things on R10 and in high Reaper raids. And uh, that's not this. However, if you're somebody who doesn't do high Reaper raids, Bear Druid is amazing because you get all of the incredible area of effect the entire time while leveling. You get the area of effect during the end game. And as I said, you're a crowd control machine. Anything that's in the room with you is crowd controlled. It's knocked down. You're super tanky. I cannot recommend Bear Druid enough to pretty much everybody. In fact, if you're watching this video and you haven't played Bear Druid yet, what are you doing? Go, go, go make one right now. There's a build link in the description. Go play Bear Druid right now. Stop wasting your time watching videos on YouTube and, uh, that's not true, actually, like and subscribe, but then go play Bear Druid. Or you can wait and listen to me tell you all about it while I pass it over to me with the build. I am barely able to contain my excitement when talking about the Bear Druid, one of the best leveling and Reaper quest running type of characters. This thing just slams its way through the competition with tons of AOE stuns, AOE trips that work on Reapers for some reason, and a gazillion hit points. You're gonna be a valuable asset to any team that you join. But the question is, how exactly do you build a bear druid? Well, it turns out it's really easy. You put all your points into strength, some points into constitution, and some points into wisdom, and then you click on people and they die. It's really cool and really strong. I went with 18 Druid, 1 Favorite Soul, and Warlock. The Favorite Soul level is to get access to one of the Favorite Soul Trance abilities that allows me to add my Wisdom to my damage, which is very cool. And then the Warlock is to get access to something called uh, Arcane Warrior. So this is something that's been going around if you haven't heard this yet. This is my first time trying it out. It works fairly well in quests where you're just kind of like leveling and blowing through stuff. It won't work too well, but in R10s where you're fighting lots of monsters or in raids where you have prolonged fighting, it's very powerful. The basic idea behind the one Warlock, and this is all it provides, is I take out of the Warlock tree this button, Enlightened Spirit Aura, which makes me deal an aura in damage every five seconds nearby enemies, which counts as a spell. And then under feats, I take Arcane Warrior at level 28, and then every time my aura damages something, I get one melee power, and it stacks up to 20 times. Uh, it's really easy to maintain the stacks because I don't have to do anything, so it's basically just free melee power, uh, so it's not too bad. If you're wondering why I did that, um, I really wanted the Favored Soul level because the Favored Soul gives me access to Divine Will for the extra damage and DCs of tactical feats. And since I was giving up the capstone, uh, because I'm not being, playing a pure druid, of the 10% attack speed bonus, I had to find another way to kind of make up some of the damage. And the 20 melee power from one level of Warlock is pretty much the best you can get. So that's why I did that. Strength, con, little bit of wisdom, and you're all set. As far as your skills go, you can kind of do whatever you want. Just do something really important. Don't level Intimidate unless you want to tank as a bear. This is a DPS bear build, so as a result, I need to make sure my Intimidate is as low as possible, because I use the attack Maul in combat because it is a fantastic stun. It's a full frontal cleave stun. It'll stun all the monsters in front of you. Incredibly useful if you're running any type of easy or hard content, it doesn't really matter. But Maul has a secondary effect, which it causes an Intimidate. So if you have a high Intimidate, you're gonna pull aggro on the monsters. Now in the low levels of content, not a big deal, especially during the leveling process or when you're playing on like elite difficulty, you're a big tanky bear, so that's nice. But when you get to the higher levels, R7 to 10, if you intimidate the monsters, then the tank who was tanking the monsters is now not tanking them. The monsters will turn around and start hitting you uh, and then you instantly die. So that's a bit of a problem. So you don't want that to happen. So don't level intimidate if you are gonna be a DPS bear, just like this one. 
I forgot, that's why I have five ranks, and I stopped doing that really early. Um, next, let's go into the feats. Now, bears are pretty straightforward. Uh, for the most part, you just take the bear combat style feat of natural fighting three times. Uh, on top of that, you do have to take uh, martial weapon proficiency. So uh, you, uh, sorry, where is it, proficiency? You will need to make sure you get the right martial weapon proficiency. Uh, I took great sword for heroic leveling because I have a sword of shadow, uh, but the weapon you want to use on this character is a falchion. It's the best weapon for it. So if you don't own the sword of shadows, then just take falchion proficiency pretty early on and then just level your whole way with a falchion. Use falchion for the end game. It's the best two-handed weapon out there. On top of that, we've also got improved critical slashing here because I use falchions, power attacks, and then I didn't have any other feats to spend on, so I took weapon focus slashing because I just needed to spend a feat on something, and it gives a little bit of extra damage. Another feat I like taking on Bear Druid is uh, metamagic feat quicken because I hate casting spells slowly, and you can just leave quicken on. Uh, you don't really worry about spell points in combat because you get them back when you attack monsters, and so you can just constantly belt out heals, AoE heals, healing your entire raid as well as casting your abilities faster and using your roar faster, which is very, very cool. And when we move into epics, uh, overwhelming critical is great. Epic fortitude, so you don't fail fortitude saves on a one. Epic damage reduction, so you take less damage is nice. And then for your destiny feats, I grabbed perfect natural fighting, which gives even more damage to two-handed weapons in bear form, as well as crush weakness for extra damage to the helpless and then harbinger of chaos. Now, this is not the best feat, but this character uses um, a certain epic destiny that's useful later, um, and this kind of feeds into that. And then as far as the actual legendary feat went, I went with Scion of Arborea. You know, you don't really need the sneak attack damage on this character, and uh, I'd rather just have the extra hit chance as well as the melee power here. Now for your spells, you don't take any of the offensive damage spells. You basically just take the bear spells. So I'm just grabbing like Ball and Shred and Shremor. Outside of that, grab some heals, grab some buffs. You're pretty straightforward. The only things I want to make sure I kind of impress upon, uh, when you get the opportunity to have the mass... Uh, vigor and the mass greater vigor and stuff take these really really good for leveling for you and your allies so you can just kind of swipe them out every once in a while and it affects everyone super good for support and then once you get to the line regenerate mass this is the best arguably one of the best heals in the whole game um and again it, it says it costs 50 which you think is a big deal but once you actually get into combat you'll see you don't really spend any spell points anything and it's very 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 powerful now, the reason why I say you don't spend spell points is because I have Nature's Warrior, Essence of the Shrike. This is an ability that says striking a blow focuses your mind and body. When you critically hit an enemy, while in any wolf or bear form, you get 20 temporary spell points. You are constantly attacking, and both Shred and Maul give you increased chance to critically strike. Additionally, I played as a half-orc, so I have this guaranteed critical strike, and you get an ability in epics called Adrenaline, which guarantees a critical strike, which means... You're always critically striking, so you always have temporary spell points, so you can always cast these spells, which makes your character very, very valuable in any type of raid scenario or R10 scenario. Now, while we're looking at the Epic Destinies, as I said, or not the Epic Destiny Enhancements, you do take the War Soul for the Divine Will. This is kind of important because it's a huge amount of increased damage. You do take the Enlightened Spirit for the Eldritch Aura, although this only applies in Epics. So I actually took this last. I took this as my level 20 level as Warlock. So I basically went 1, 2, 3 as Bear, so I got to, or as Druid, so I got 3rd level Druid. Then my 4th level was Favorite Soul, and with the rest as Druid, and then my 20th level was Warlock to kind of fill that in there. The Standing Knife Fighter is nice because Action Boost Haste is the best Action Boost of the game, and it just feels amazing to be able to get your character to attack faster, so you really want that. And then Protector, Nature's Protector, is obviously the Bear Tree. You want to pick up anything that gives you extra damage, so everything on the left side here grants extra damage. You also want to grab Bloody Claws because you get these stacks called the Killer Instinct, which you probably saw in the video that you saw before this, where basically every time you use Shred or Maul, you generate a stack of Killer Instinct, these little like markers on the side of your screen, and then you can cash out those stacks by using Roar, the level two spell, and it stuns all nearby monsters. The area for this is absolutely gigantic, and the amount of damage it does in heroics is also amazing. I would oftentimes clear entire rooms while leveling. This is doing like 3000 damage right now, even at like level 30, which is not that bad, honestly, to go across an entire group of monsters. So very, very useful ability there. Nature's Warrior gives a ton of damage, both getting extra trip chance, the extra critical multi from True Hunter, and then just extra damage. You've got the extra helpless damage here, and then extra melee power while raging. It's important to note that while you can get Rage of the Beast soon, I generally don't rage until I have the Beast Awakened, so way later in the tree, because once I actually have the Beast Awakened, then I can cast spells while raging, which means I can heal myself or others if they get into a bind. So I do take the raging stuff while leveling, but until I get the Beast Awakened, because you can't cast magic while raging because you're too angry, um, 
I, I don't do that. But once you have this, then yeah, I just rage constantly. It's not a big deal. The last part is the half-orc tree. Now, of course, I use the half-orc tree, but my character is a racial completionist, so you're not going to be able to spend 23 points. So if you're following this build one-to-one, -one, you're basically just going to be taking points out of the half-orc tree, working backwards until you're at the same amount of points that I have. And I'll be putting a build together that's a, um, a first life friendly version of this, so you don't have to worry about um, having racial completionists. But just so you know, half-orc was the last thing I put points into. Technically not, because I started with 16 points, but it was, it, for you, it should be the last place you put your points, because it has the lowest yield out of anything else. General rule of thumb, this is not always the case, but general rule, the racial uh, points are usually the lowest yield out of anything else, because your class trees give you new class abilities and class effects, whereas your racial trees are usually passives or like minor things. Not always, but that's a general rule of thumb. Then we go into Epic Destinies. Now, there's a lot of different options here, um, but I wanted to go with Fury of the Wild. Uh, so Fury of the Wild here, grabbing Adrenaline, because this makes us your next attack, deals a ton of damage and auto crits and stuns targets. So with all that combined, I can press Adrenaline and then like use Shred, which gets a higher crit multi and just blow somebody up. So it's super powerful. Plus you get the extra uh, defensive stats from Primal Scream and offensive stats, extra double strike raging effects, very powerful. The reason why we took Harbinger of Chaos is because it doubles the power of Scarred by Chaos for even more hit points and physical resistance rating. And then you get extra health based on your Wilderness Lore feats, and conveniently you're a Druid, so you have a lot of those. Um, Dreadnought makes a great secondary and also is where you use the Mantle, uh, because the Dreadnought Mantle is super duper strong, granting you both extra damage as well as extra damage against the Helpless, and the ability to stack vulnerability on targets so they take even more damage. Also, you can't complain about displacement while you have an action boost active. And then finally, we have Shadow Dancer here for less threat generated from all sources. You kind of need that because if you press Roar, you're going to get 50% more threat. That's your big AoE stun. And while raging, you get 50% more threat. So you will need threat reduction on this character. Basically, you need Cover of Darkness and then a couple filigrees to kind of make sure you're under that 100% threshold so you're not like ripping aggro off of the tanks constantly when you're doing content. Now, as far as the itemization goes, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Strength gear is good. Um, anything that gives you extra damage. So, you know, the stats you're looking for, Seeker, Deception, Deadly, Accuracy. These are things that give you extra damage when you attack monsters. So you want that. As I said, Strength is really nice. Healing Amplification to increase the amount of healing that you receive. Devotion to increase the amount of healing that you, uh, like, cast out with your spells is also nice. Uh, you're looking for uh, resistance bonuses to saves, sheltering reduces the amount of damage that you take, fortification effects, stuff like that. You will need to have like one wisdom item kicking around somewhere that gives you a little bit of wisdom just so you can make sure you can cast all of your spells because I think the, the build I'm going to be putting together will likely start with like a 14 or a 16 wisdom. So you'll need like a item somewhere to make sure you can cast your spells, but having like a plus five to a wisdom item by the time you get to level 19 shouldn't be too big of a problem. So you should be able to cast pretty much everything. And as I said, I ran sort of shadows for leveling, but uh, if you happen to not have this, then just use whatever falchion you can get your hands on, and it's pretty good, like a Barovian falchion starting at level 10, or there's the Tail of the Scorpion from level 14, or at level 20, you can pick yourself up an Epic Zoom, which is even better than the sort of shadows, so, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, but that's pretty much it. Bear Druid, super duper strong, fantastic as a leveling character. It feels great. You're just kind of invincible the whole time. You can stun entire rooms. It's just a really fun character to play. And then as you move into epics and towards the end game, again, very good supportive character. Um, I decided not to take this into the ultra end game because I found just the control was a little stiff and it kind of didn't line up with exactly the way I wanted my character to play. So I'm going to be moving on to something else, but you might like it a lot. So I recommend you give it a shot um, because, you know, everybody has different preferences and different things that they like. So hopefully you enjoy Bear Druid all on your own. But uh, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, and I've got barely anything else to say about this. So thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, hit that like and follow and subscribe button and all those other buttons that you got, you got you click and tap right there. Um, and that's it. So thank you for watching. Enjoy the next video that I'm going to put out, which will be about a character that whips people in the face with a big chain. Bye-bye.